Hey there, welcome back. My name is Chili, and this is the Advanced Tutorial Series Lesson 11. And it's been a long time. Shouldn't have left you without a dope beat to step to. But I'm back, and uh, let's get on with it. I'm hoping for this lesson to take less than 40 minutes. That's my goal for today. Because time is precious, especially my time. So what we're going to do is I provided you with a... That's not what I wanted to look at. On the website, you can download the current version of Thrust up until lesson 10 complete. So I'm going to get you to do that. Put that in your folder if you don't already have it. If you have a copy, that's fine too. Then I'm going to find my project folder. I'm going to move it in here. And let's open it up. Let's see where we left off. Shall we? Refresh our collective memories. What do we got here? Start without debugging. There we go. So yeah, we got our good old ship flying through space with walls. And the walls are pretty fucking sweet because they're all fat and shit. Because that's what we did last time if, I, if memory serves me correctly. So we got our fat walls set up, and that's all good. We got our physics and everything that we did. So what's next? What's next? What does Chili have on the menu for today? Well, the walls look sweet, but the ship in its uh, wireframe, it's not, uh, it's not turning me on like it used to. We need something a little more arousing, a little more detailed, a little more phallic. Now, a user on the forums by the name of Bob Lobla created this uh, fantastic, magnificent dick ship for us. And that's what we're going to be using for this tutorial. Also, it can be found on the download page. So we want to use this ship in our game. Now, this ship is a bitmap. It's a raster image, whereas our, up till now, our game has all been working on geometry and just simple priv primitives like lines and triangles. So we're gonna have to step up our game. We're gonna get our uh, vec not vectors, raster images into our engine. Now the thing about that is, that's not what I wanted. This one? Nope, that's not it either. Oh, it's got too many goddamn windows. The thing about that is, is that we I mean, we've done raster images before, right, with, uh, well, for example, with the platformer, but we haven't rotated a raster image. So that's going to be the challenge for this lesson. Actually, this lesson is just going to be a setup, and then next lesson, I'm going to hit you guys with the hard maths. So, what do I have here? This is thrust, whatever. Um, first thing we're going to do is we're going to upgrade the framework for our thrust. Because right now we don't really have uh, the tools we need to deal properly with the surfaces, raster images. The you know, closest thing we have to a surface is the system buffer here. And that doesn't have an object, not a class associated with it. It's just a basic... Uh, dynamically allocated block of memory and we could do it like that but I mean we're going all full out OOP on this motherfucker yeah you know me so let's uh, let's do some OOP on our surfaces now next download you're gonna wanna look at is this one here it contains the classes that we're gonna be incorporating I'm not going to go through typing this shit all out, and that's going to take too much time, and it's not, there's not too much here that you haven't already seen, so we're just going to incorporate this into the, uh, into the engine. The first one we're going to put in is colors. Now, there's already a colors file in there, but it only has a few defines for some uh, color macros. What we want is we want a color class that's going to replace... Uh, D3D color, which is just a simple integral type. Now the color class is a, is a very lightweight wrapper around uh, 
the D3D color format integral type. And the main thing that it gives us is it gives us this union here. Now, what's a union? Uh, let's, let's take a look. I have a diagram I prepared and it displays here what, what you're going to see with a union. A union basically lets you declare different variables that all occupy the same space in memory. So they're like different aspects of the same data in memory. So let's look at the code and you'll get an idea of what I'm talking about. So you got a union here and the union is between a D3D color, which is just a 32-bit integer, and a structure which contains four characters. So that's eight bits times four, 32 bits. So this thing and this structure are actually, uh, they're representing the same space in memory in this union. They're just giving us two different ways of accessing the same data. We can access it as a single 32-bit value, or we can access the individual 8-bit components of that 32-bit value. And that lets us do uh, things like alpha blending and other operations that have to look at the individual components. It lets us do those things a lot more sexily. And I'm all about sexy code, as you may have already guessed. So that's the main, uh, the main plus, the main pro of, uh, the main advantage of our color class. Now, what else we have? Just some basic uh, constructors here. Assignment operator that lets us assign D3D color to our class. And most importantly, our conversion operator, which allows us to pass our color objects of our color class type into functions that were built expecting a D3D color. So it works nice, it works very seamlessly and it gives us sexy times. So let's put this into our solution, shall we? First thing we're gonna do, we're gonna go find, we're gonna find all instances of D3D color and we're going to replace them with our color class. I'm going to go entire solution, replace all. That there should be more replaced than that. I'm going to go ahead and say something fucked up here. That says color here. Ah, this was not the thing that I wanted to change. I'm going to close this now and not save any of those changes. Good. Let's go and open the right one. D3D color. And replace that with color. Replace all. Yes, there we go, 41. That that sounds more like it. Now, it doesn't know what the fuck color is, so let's enlighten the compiler with... Uh, just suck on my nuts. I get all this shit ready, and then when it's time to record, I can't find the right shit anyways, so it doesn't matter. Do all the preparation you want. Still gonna fuck it up. Replace. So we're gonna replace our old colors.h with the new one. Open this motherfucker up. And open this motherfucker up. And yeah, that's what we wanted. So let's try and build. All right, color underscore xRGB not found. Which makes sense, because this was a D3D color underscore XRGB, and it replaced the first part with color, making rendering it basically unintelligible to the compiler. Now we can we could fix this two ways. Because color is now a class, we can use an initializer like this to initialize it by component, 
which is nice. But even better, we'll just go green, right? That's the easiest solution. The most self-documenting. We'll start, and again, we're working... Everything's good. Now, next thing that we're going to want to put in here. Oh, I guess I could uh, give you guys a little demonstration of... Man, I'll do that later. Let's, let's uh, finish upgrading, shall we? So the other thing we want is surface.h. And this is the obviously the class that's going to be the surface. I will just we'll put it in the uh, put this in the solution. Uh, get rid of that. Yeah, we don't want this. So let's uh, let's open up again the thrust. We'll put surface in here. Open this up. We'll go to thrust, and we'll now we can't see our fucking window. So let's bring it to the front. And we'll find surface and drag it into the correct folder here. Good. Good. So far so good. Let's go outlining collapse to definitions. And I'm just going to give you a quick tour of the surface class. We have some constructors. Construct with width, height, and pitch. With just width and height. Uh, this is a copy constructor, which or move constructor, I should say, which moves from one surface into the other. It empties the surface that you're moving from. Destructor, which just frees up the buffer. Uh, now, save is useful. We won't be using it, but uh, there's a lot of meat in here. I'm not going to go over this part, but it allows you to save the surface to a bitmap file, and that can be useful for a number of reasons. I originally used this for uh, debugging because I replaced my back, my system buffer surface with this, and then this allowed me to uh, save my system buffer to an image file in the middle of rendering a scene, and that allowed me to debug the scene, see exactly what was going on at any point during the rendering process. Whereas with just viewing the screen as the program is running you would have to obviously wait until the uh, the back buffer is presented so it's good for debugging it's good for other stuff i guess i don't know clear again clears it present is used to copy this into the the back buffer on the uh, graphics card what else we got we got put pixel very simple get pixel and get width get height get pitch get a pointer to the buffer, get a constant pointer to the buffer, and this one from file allows you to load an image file into a surface, which we'll be using for our textures. Uh, what else we got? We got a simple uh, static helper function here that calculates the pitch given the width that you want and the byte alignment that you want. Useful Pitch and alignment is, of course, uh, used to keep, uh, keep the, uh, how do I say this, to keep every start pixel of every line aligned with uh, the memory access alignment that you want. So it's not that important, but uh, when you're going to be copying over to graphics memory, maybe, that might be useful, but it's mostly important for when you want to use SSE instructions on your uh, image buffer. Then you have to have 8-byte uh, alignment or 128-bit alignment, so that's what that's in there. You can pretty much forget about that bullshit. It won't be useful. And that's it. And you've got uh, constants to remember the width, height, height, and pitch of the surface. And, of course, a pointer to the buffer, which is just going to be a dynamically allocated block of memory, 32-bit values, which are our color class. Objects. And that's that. So, that's the grand tour of the surface. Let us uh, incorporate this into the framework. So the only thing we need to change here is we want to change this to a surface.
So, we in include surface.h and uh, Robert we add a baby it's a boy surface sis uh, buffer okay now we get a bunch of errors so let's find the errors wow that's a lot of errors. Let's get, let's get on this. Okay, p sys buffer is not a thing. Sys buffer is a thing, and we want to initialize it with screen width and screen height. Now we don't need to call this new allocator. That's that solved. Here, we don't have to call. We don't have to delete anything because the destructor will be called by default for an embedded object. Here, begin frame is just clearing the sys buffer. So we'll just call sys buffer. Wait. Z Z. Oh, too much zing. Why? Okay, fill value is going to be the value used to clear the buffer. So we go sys buffer dot clear fill value done end frame all right we don't need this all we need i'm not going to delete this just yet all we need is sys buffer dot present and uh oh yeah so here we pass the width and the height um, but we don't actually need to pass the width and the height, do we? Because we already know it, because we initialized it, that's stored inside of the surface. So I was basically probably high on my own farts when I wrote that little bit of code. But let's, uh, let's go to surface and we're going to go to present here. And we're going to get rid of this width and height because it is superfluous. And we'll just use the width and the height that's already stored in the class. That's what it's there for. Let's go back. So here, all we want to pass now is the pitch, which is back rect dot pitch and the B Y T E pointer to back rect dot P bits. There we have our present function call, which will copy sys buffer onto the back buffer on the video card. Put pixel will now be sys buffer dot put pixel. X, Y, C. Get pixel will likewise be return uh, sys buffer dot get pixel. Not pitch, you mother trucker. Not pixel. What are we from France? I don't think so. X, Y. And that's it. I think that's all we really need to fix up build. All right, we got some unsigned unsigned mismatches here from this. And I don't like that because I've managed to keep uh, we've managed to keep this warning free so far. Let's not ruin a good thing here, people. Build. Okay, now, just a couple of minor enhancements. Uh, uh, toggle. So this, uh, these assertions, let's put them in... Ah, that's wrong one. X. Let's put them in the surface class because 
we can be calling uh, put pixel. It won't just be called through D three D graphics. It'll also be called uh, just by itself directly. So we want to make sure that when we're in debug mode, that we're able to detect problems such as writing or reading outside the boundaries of a surface. So we'll do that and D three D. Not H. I want. C, motherfucker. Yeah, so we'll get rid of this here. We don't need to test twice in a row, even in debug mode. That seems gratuitous. Build. So far, so good. Last thing we're going to do here is we are going to add one more function that I snuck in here. Let's go to uh, surface again, surface.h. Down here in this point here, we want to move this stuff into d3dgraphics.cpp. So let's cut X and we'll go to d3dgraphics.h toggle put pixel, get pixel, and put pixel alpha. We'll delete this note here. We will uncomment with control E, control U, and we have put pixel alpha. We need to take this control C and put the uh, signature in here. We'll just put it after get pixel. Put pixel alpha. All right, toggle. All right, so here is, this is just alpha blending a single uh, pixel draw to the system buffer. And you can see it's very nice, very simple here. Here's how where we compose it, calculate the components. Compare that to uh, this. You know, it's, it's a lot nicer than this bullshit, right? At least I think so. So now we have our upgraded thing here. Yeah, I just I created this uh, this color thing, and also the surface when I was working on something a little interesting that I might you might be interested in seeing if I can find it here. And this one. I think I've I've already shown this, but yeah, just this stuff here, being able to work with the. Uh, the components individually without all that uh, bit shifting bullshit really made uh, implementing this blur stuff or bloom bloom effect really a lot easier so yeah but that's that's an, that's another story today we are going to we want to rotate our dumb bullshit so now the question is, how are we gonna rotate? Where is it? Here it is. How are we gonna rotate a raster image? Well, you might uh, you might draw from past experience and say, well, when we wanted to uh, draw a rotated version of a triangle, we transformed the vertices and then we drew the triangle with the transformed vertices. So if we want to do an image, what's an image? Well, an image is just a collection of pixels in a regular grid, is it not? What are pixels? Pixels are points, basically. And what is a vertex? It's a point. So if we can transform the vertices into screen space and draw them, why don't we just apply the same transformations to each of the pixels in the image and voila, a viola as they say in France, we got ourselves a rotated raster image and we can also scale it and all that fun stuff. It seems like it's basically just a, uh, it's a lock there. It goes without saying as they say. So let's, let's see. Now you guys don't have to uh, follow along with this one. You just watch. You don't have to type this in. Uh, I am going to copy and paste some code 
that I have from my my experimentation build here. That's not it. This is it. Let's change branches here. Rote scale. All right. Now we're cooking with gas. So I should have a function in here that does stuff. Transblip, that's what we want. And we're gonna uh, rubber. We add a baby eats a boy. We're gonna put this in here. Well, I'm gonna do it. You're just gonna watch me. So we got a transblit function. Wait a second while I take care of some. details here so the function takes a surface and it takes a matrix so the surface is obviously going to be the raster image we want to draw and the matrix is going to be the transformation that we want to apply to it so now this is actually built with my other code base which uses slightly different terminology terminology there we go. And you two. Starting to get super hungry. Okay. So what are we doing here? Um source point times translation. Okay, yeah. So this should be backwards. In my original code base, I got the matrix multiplication order backwards. So it should be trans times source point that seems fine and that's it so how, what are we doing here we get the width of the surface we get the height of the surface we drink the whiskey drink we drink the lager drink we drink the something drink we drink the cider drink yeah we get our center which is basically just the width and the height divided by two that's going to be the point around which we want to rotate all of the points or all of the pixels then we loop, we transform each pixel from its, you know, normal, for example, the top left pixel would normally be zero, zero, and we want to translate it to negative width, negative height, divided by two, right? So we translate all the pixels so that they're rotating about the center of the image, or they're arranged around the center of the image. Then we apply our uh, transformation matrix and then we put that pixel on the screen with its uh, newly transformed coordinates and the pixels of the original coordinates in the uh, in the texture or the surface yes i'm not sure if that explanation was coherent my brain just kind of shut off and my mouth kept going but anyways that's what we're doing so let's create a simple test to see if this works so we're gonna go mr. game we're gonna add a couple of user variables surface image and float Uh, scale or zoom I don't know which one it should be should either be scale or zoom we'll see okay is equal to 1.0 F can we do that sure we can because we're in C++ 11 which rocks it rocksers your boxers Okay, so we need to initialize the surface image. So we do that by calling surface from file. And then we want to give the file name, which is going to be... Shit, what is it called again? It's going to be the USS Turgidity. Not turdgidity, you creep. That's just gross. 
Turgidity. Not PNG. There we go. We want to make sure that is a wide character string. And there we go. Saying that a lot lately. There we go. Or maybe not lately. Maybe I always just say it. And I'm just noticing it now. Control E. Control U. Yes. So I think I, I think I named it scale, right? Good. So we already have zo mouse zooming for this bullshit. Um, let's comment this out because we're not going to be drawing. We're not going to be drawing the ship or anything. Ah, we can leave this, I guess. Who cares? We're going to comment this out, though. Comment. And now we are going to... We're going to build a matrix to transform our raster image. So, we'll make a constant mate 3 tranny equals... So, we want to move... No, wait. We want to rotate it. And we'll rotate it based on the position of the mouse on the screen. So, we'll say rotation is equal to mate... Or the tranny is equal to mate 3 rotation and the angle will be equal to uh, float mouse dot get mouse x divided by 800 and we'll multiply that by 2 times pi so if you're up on your your radians and your happy stuff like that you will understand that that means we will go through one full rotation as we sweep from left to right on the screen. Okay, next thing we want is a scaling. So mate 3, scaling, scale. And the last thing we want to apply, mate 3, translation, and we'll just go to the middle of the screen, so 400, 300, and there we go. We got our tranny. Now we gotta draw that motherfucker. So we go GFX dot, uh, where is it? It's gotta be at the bottom, right? Transblit, image, tranny. And there you go. All set. My hands are getting super cold. So I turned off the heater because it's fucking noisy. And because it dries out the air, which ruins my voice. So what do we got? I don't see it. I don't see it. Okay. Now I knew it wasn't going to work. I knew that for a number of reasons. However, okay, well the first problem is probably we actually need to put the image in the folder. Otherwise, no image. So let's go, you want to put it in the engine folder. So let's take the USS Turgidity, drop, drop a big Turgidity in the folder. A big steaming Turgidity. And, this is not the right project. That project can suck on my nuts. Okay, we don't have to rebuild. There we go. We got it. Oh, we lost it. Oh, we crashed. Okay. Well, crashing is a simple problem. Simply solved because all, we's, all we gots to do is... Wait. Wait a second. That's right here. Toggle... All we got to do is check something here. If destination point dot is inside the rectangle defined by uh, 0 0.0 f 0 0.0 f. Wait, yeah, we want floating points. And 
screen width minus that's not a minus minus one screen height minus one yes is that a delete it is it is a delete yeah yeah and there okay so now we're doing basically per pixel clipping which I don't like to do but whatever doesn't matter you'll see why so this will fix crashing yes so now as we see our ship is rotating around it's not rotating around the right point so those of you astute enough to catch that can give yourselves a pat on the back the reason why is because of course where is it? The order in which uh, matrix operations are applied in this multiplication is backwards. So this one is going to be applied first, then this one, then this one, which is the opposite of what we want. So in this situation, we want to put the translation first. So put that there. Put that there. We don't want that there. We do want to find our keyboard. There. Okay. So now we translate, rotate, scale, then everything should be peachy keen. Okay. Now we've got our rotation. What do you notice about it? Well, depending on the angle, our ship is getting awfully holy. Not in the, uh, the Pope John Paul sense of the word. Holes in the ship, not good. So let's try, uh, let's try making it bigger. Let's see what happens then. Oh dear, oh my. Our ship seems to have disintegrated into its constituent atoms. That's not good for structural integrity. Or the crew, I would imagine. But there you have it. So this was pretty easily predictable based on, you know, just common sense of what would happen when we applied this approach to the problem. But there you have it. If you make the ship small enough, you don't get any holes anymore. If you make it really small, it just starts looking like ass, though. But, yeah, so holes in the ship. Why, why, why? Well, that's quite simple, isn't it? You've got a certain amount of pixels, right? And you make the image bigger to cover more surface area. But, I mean, you still only have the same amount of pixels. You don't get any extra pixels. So they have to be stretched out to cover that area. I'm just going to draw circles because they're faster. And... There you go, you get gaps in your thing. Now, even if you don't stretch the image out, even if you just rotate it at the same the same uh, scaling, just a one-to-one -one scaling, because of uh, rounding and stuff like that, you're going to get holes appearing because some, uh, some pixels are going to end up mapping to the same point. And then some points are going to be left empty, just from, you know, basic rounding error when you're rotating your uh, image. So, now actually a user on the website uh, made a game, a game where you're flying a jet, and it was a, it had a sprite that was being rotated, and they used this approach, and they found that they got holes in their ship. So their solution was just to, to make the image really big, the, uh, the asset, and then scale it down and draw it. And if you scale it down enough, you get enough coverage so that you don't have any uh, holes in your ship, no matter what your rotation angle is. And, well, that kind of works, sure, but A, it doesn't look the best. And more importantly, B, it's really wasteful. Because uh, you've got all these pixels that you're looping through, but... They're all, you're writing to the same points over and over. They're overlapping. You're wasting a lot of uh, memory moves. It's all redundant and it's just not good. So, so what's the solution? What's the fix, Chili? 
Give me the fix. Give me my crack. I'm going to give you your crack cocaine. And it comes in the form of geometry, which you might have guessed, judging from, you know, the title of the lesson. So what you do is you've got this raster image that you want to draw. And you make a geometric model. Some geometry, you know, with vertices. And then you apply your transformation to draw it on the screen. Or to project the geometry on the screen. Now, if this were, say, you know, a, a solid image or a solid piece of geometry, you know, it'd be, it would be split up into triangles and you'd loop through the scan lines of the triangles and fill in those uh, pixels on the screen. But what we're going to do is instead of that, we, instead of filling it with just the same color, we're going to loop through these pixels, but we're going to use our position on the screen and derive from that the position and the texture which corresponds to that pixel on the screen. So this is called uh, reverse mapping or reverse lookup or whatever you want to call it. So normally when we're drawing uh, geometry, for example, we do a forward mapping where we apply a transformation to a pixel in the model or to a vertex in the model to get its position on screen space. But with reverse mapping is we start with this point on screen space and we try to find where that point is in the original, well, in this case, in the texture. Now, how we do that is for every uh, vertex here, it's going to obviously have a coordinate, like let's say negative 10, negative 10, and this one would be uh, 10, negative 10, so, so on and forth, so, so on and so forth. But we're also going to add there too, let me see here, get a different color, another coordinate here, I'll call this one zero, zero. And that is going to be a reference, a mapping, to this uh, pixel in the surface here, or this texel, if you want, texture pixel. So this vertex is mapped to this point on the texture or surface. This vertex is mapped to this point. This vertex is mapped to this point, and this one is mapped to this point. So basically what you're doing then is for every pixel you're lighting up on the screen, you're going to say, okay, what is its relationship to the screen space vertices? And based on that relationship, you're going to blend these mapping values together to find the space in the texture that corresponds to this pixel. And the way you're going to do that is with a little thing called linear interpolation or lerping not larping don't get those things mixed up ever lerping yes uh, it's a thing and it's very important for graphics and I'm gonna go I'm gonna be all about that in the next lesson because this lesson is over I'm already four point I'm already four minutes and 17 seconds over my goal but that was basically all the setup you don't have to uh, like I said you don't have to you can if you want but you don't have to do this code that I put in here with the with the hoo-ha and the whatnot no with the where's my where's my stuff herp a derp here it is with the transblit you don't have to do the transblit stuff because obviously I mean I, I could imagine you could probably use this effect somewhere but it's 
pretty niche and I don't think we need it. So it's just enough for you to have watched uh, me do it and see the repercussions. And next time we're going to we're going to draw or we're going to do stuff that'll let us draw our raster image at any scale we want without holes and without, um, you know, wasted memory accesses. So that's that. That's it. We're done. I'm done. So I got to stop this madness and turn on the heater and then get some grinds. Oh, no grinds broke the mouth. Shaka.